People, deluded, I'm back again. Again, we saw us lose to Bournemouth. It's our second defeat of 2024, our first of the season. And it calls for people with calm heads and strong opinions. So I had to get my dude here, man. What are you saying, my guy? Good? Yes, brother. I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, sir? I mean, considering the result, terrible. But if football's all we got to complain about in life, then we're all right, isn't it? True that, brother. If, if, if Arsenal losing on the weekend is the worst thing that's happening in your life. You're living good. <laughs> You're living good. <laughs> hey, man, you have to keep balance. But you know us Arsenal fans, or in general, you know, we're the best thing since life spread. We've been allergic to losing. We lose. The league's done. It's over. This player's good, not good enough. The manager's this, that, the third. What's going to happen against Liverpool? So we've got a lot to cover in this half an hour, man. The first thing I want to ask you now, it's in another game with another red card. Do we have a discipline problem? No, we've got a stupidity problem. This is why he's here. He doesn't mix his words. No, but we've got an idiot problem. Yeah. The thing is, I I was saying for a couple of days now that we've gone from having one of the best disciplinary records in the league. I think two seasons ago, we didn't have any red cards. Last year, we had two, but one of them was like contentious. The Tommy Asu one was like super harsh, I thought. And, And that was two over 38 games. We're now three and eight. Do you know what I mean? And it's not no, like it deluded. Would... It's not like back in the day under Wenger, if you remember. We'd, we'd rack up red cards, bro. We'd rack up the red cards. Um, but the like next card was... points, man. We love the red well, card. Listen, we, there was a few seasons where we were getting like three, four season minimum. Vieira and man, they were getting two alone. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But the difference between then and now, which is why I say I think we've got an idiot problem rather than a disciplinary problem, is that the red cards back then were taking man's head off, or they were for high challenges, or they were for late ones, or they were for licking man down off, off the ball. Fact. Now, a red card's a red card. If you if, if it's a foul, it's a foul. You got to go. You got to go. But for me, if you're gonna get sent off, at least have the image of a hard man. At least have the image of like don't play with Fact. man. Because breaking in Vieira settings. Yeah, bro. Don't come near me with the ball because you know what time it is. If you're gonna get a red card, at least make a man know. We're getting red cards for kicking, not even towing the ball away. And you kind of eat it. It's just stupidness. So for me, we, we've got an eat it problem. If you're going to get red cards, like, okay, when I was younger, deluded, my mum said to me, Jordan, don't let me catch your teeth in, you know. Don't let me catch your teeth in. If, if <laughs> like you ever, the same life. <laughs> if, if, if I ever catch you, if, if the police ever, ever come back to my house with you, I say you were stealing from a house, from stealing from a shop. The, you stole, the stole black's going to get beaten off you. Oh, bro, the belt's coming out quickly, right? But she said, but, she said, but, <laughs> if you're good at teeth, rob the bank. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we all live the same life, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're going to steal, at least rob the bank. Do you know what Make I mean? it worth it. Make it worth it. And that's my point, deluded. We're getting these stupid red cards that are going to hurt us. Well, they're hurting us now because it dropped. Uh, six points already we've dropped just through red cards so well no look, it's more than that we, we, we drew two and, and lost one so for me it's just like if you're gonna, if you're gonna get red cards yeah bro like fix up because the, the margins now are really fine for what we can do in terms of catching this Man City team and it's hard enough as it is it's hard when you don't get any red cards it's hard when you've got 11 men on the pitch week to week but you're going to games now with 11, uh, sorry, 10 men, 10 men, 10 men. It's just like, bro. Held it up until the last 20 and then we threw it away in 90 min- 99, 99 minutes, I think. I think between Martinelli's chance where he should have scored, they obviously got the first one where they done us from a set piece. And I, mm. I personally think, I'm not blaming Kivio because I think it was on brand. You look at Trossard's pass and Saliba's dumb stuff. You look at when Kivio obviously initially done well and then a silly back pass. I think that sums up collectively. We weren't at the races. I think midfield, no. we struggled. I think we couldn't mm. play out from the back. I know there's been changes and all of that jazz, but I still think there was enough out there to get the job done. Before we, I ask you about the performance, yeah. Do you think it was a red card for Saliba? Because many people point to the Chelsea game and say, "Boy, inconsistent." You know how Arsenal fans are. Well, the, see, the thing is that within that, there's two different questions. See, the, the, the Saliba red card is a blatant red. I don't understand the debate around it. It's a blatant red card. All this, oh, but Ben White could have come in and covered. It's a red card. If it's the other way around, we're calling for a red. So let's yeah, not Arsenal fans be. It's, it's a red card, like right. But that doesn't mean that the issue of consistency isn't a valid issue as well. For me, um, who was it? Tossin. Tossin. Chelsea. That's also a red card. Now, as Arsenal fans, we're doing a lot of crying right now. 
They're doing a lot of crying. Every Arsenal fan is crying. Oh, look at what they did. Look at and I'm not here for the tears. Like, is there is there is there an imbalance going on? Yeah, there probably is. In fact, yeah, there is. But we just gotta fight on. We just gotta fight on. For me, it's not an this idea that some kind of an agenda against Arsenal Football Club. For me, is embarrassing. It little clubs our club. It little clubs our club. It makes us look like some little boy. Like we're, now we're victims, not trying to get our lunch yeah, money stolen. Yeah, man, get on with it, man. Stop crying and get on with it. And if it means we've got a fight against referees, then so be it. Come May, we'll look back and evaluate where points were dropped and where we think there were shockers in terms of decisions made. Red, tear, tear, cool. But for now, we can't control referees. We can't control the decisions that are being made. We just got to get on with it. Help yourselves. Did you Facts. did you lose a game because referee made two or three howlers? No. You lost the game because Gabriel Martinelli didn't finish his dinner. You lost the game because Saliba did something stupid. You lost the game because Trossard did an absolutely imbecile pass that put Saliba in a position. You lost the game because from what from front to back, bar Declan Rice and Thomas Partey, everybody for me two out of ten. That's hard. You reckon that that's harsh? You know, you don't think they were, they you don't think Moreno did, did okay. Awful. Marina was the worst player on the pitch. Marina was awful. Marina was absolutely awful. Let me be clear. I rate the guy. I'm glad we've got him. He'll get better. I, I rate the guy. You just he, have to he, keep it true. We just got, we just got keep, he was awful for me. And I think he was awful. Partly that wasn't even his fault. I think he was awful because he was just rubbish. But I think the idea of playing three sixes was a bit weird. I didn't get why we played all three sixes um, in the middle. That, that, no one I could think, really build out play in that. Well, and I, I think that harmed Ryo. I don't know what his job was. I don't know. I don't know what his job was. I don't know if he knew what his job was. So I'm saying that he was awful, but I think part of that, I, I, I sympathise. I think, listen, I don't. You know me, Mikel Arteta's my guy. I rate him. Uh, he's, he's my guy. But you have to hold licks. You did. He like, you have to hold criticism. He everything he decided on that game, pre-match selection, substitute substitutes during the game, and post-match in the interview, he had a shocker. He had an absolute stinker, Mikel Arteta. So I'm not going to blame Marina completely because I think that um, I think there was a bit of confusion as to what his role and his job actually was. But let's have it right. He was awful. Didn't he? Well, you thought he was good. I watched the game again and I was with you in that I think everybody was terrible. And then I watched the game again and I thought a bit of like what you're saying. I did. I wasn't necessarily for the midfield. I wasn't necessarily against it. I thought we could do a thing. I thought, all right, Sorry. cool. It, it might not be pretty. There might not be creativity, but, but you are through. international footballers. You could do something. But then when I watched the game again, a bit like piggy banking off what you said, he's left to his own devices. You're trying to do the other guard thing and lead the press. Then you're mm. dropping deep. As you said, you've got three sixes who can obviously pass the ball, but they're not Santis. They're not Cessis. They're mm. not connecting mm. players. So mm. it looked like there's a, you know, all of it is just a negative cocktail. I don't think Arteta set us up in the right way. You Agreed. coupled in the fact that you know Bournemouth are quite narrow, they're quite compact. You could mm. see with I knew he was in trouble when I looked at their fullbacks because Sterling's dropping, Trossard's dropping. They mm. back themselves. When you play Arsenal, you normally have to give us respect if they're Sacra mm. Martinelli. As a Sunday league fullback, if you know someone's a bad way, you drop off a couple of yards because you yeah. think if I get in a foot race, it's peak. They didn't do that, they pressed us well. We had no answers. As you know, football's a simple game, bro. You have to keep them at the back of your net, you need to put them in the back of yours. We had no creativity. And no answers. We couldn't defend well. Now, I'm being harsh to Mikel Arteta, but I genuinely think those tools, you could have done something. I don't know what it was of. I, I think you could have done something. Do you reckon he should have started Ethan? Played two of the two of the three that went out there and run a little Ethan, see what's going on. I wouldn't have been disappointed or upset if he had started Ethan. But equally, I think we have to be quite careful about managing his minutes. Now, I'm a believer mm. if, you're good, if you're good enough, you're old enough, right? And he's played a couple of games already. The guy, you know, can, can handle himself in the Premier League. But I think we have to be very careful about relying on him um, in such scenarios. I mean, the ideal scenario is that you bring him on when you're two up with 10 minutes to go. And you give him five, 10 games like that, but there's no pressure on him. Build him up. Make, and... He, yeah, and he can make mistakes then. He can make errors because the game's won. And it, it's, not, it's not a problem. But equally, like I said, I wouldn't have been like raging had he started because I get it. After after Odegaard, you're looking at him as the next best creator in the squad. Do you know what I mean? So I, I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been pissed or bothered if if he if he had started. Um, but um, equally, I, I wasn't kind of like rushing or you know I, I, when before the team li lineup came out, my thinking wasn't we, we should be starting Ranieri today. That wasn't my thinking, so I can't be a hypocrite. I'm a bit kind of indifferent as to how I felt about him starting or not. But on Saliba, 
Can I just tell Take it away, man. And, and, the, and the red card, bro. Because a lot he's getting a lot of heat for what he did, and I think it was silly, but the mist- the, the the foul that he gave away it made me think about something that Jamie Carragher said a few years ago on Monday Night Football, which I thought was quite interesting. He said he doesn't he he, he, he finds it interesting or he finds it baffling actually as to why so many centre backs in that scenario don't just let the guy go through. Because he's got what, a lot to do. He's got well, a lot to do. It's two things here. He said one of two things is that come to mind. First thing is you're saying to the striker, do you have the composure, the control and the execution to finish a dinner? And let's be clear, in a one-on-one, the striker should always score. The striker should score. Should score. In a one-on-one, it's just score. So he said, do you have the composure to go through and finish the goal and slot it in? But secondly, and more importantly, Jamie Carragher was saying, in that scenario, he'd be saying, Pepe, as in Pepe Reina, help me out, mate. Just, Get me out of jail. Can you, can you help me out here? And, and, and if the guy scores, you're not blaming Reina. Like I said, the one-on-one. I know I effed up, but I'm still on the pitch. Cool. But he's saying, Reina, can you help me out here a little bit? You know, help me out here, mate. And, and I thought it was Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah, just... Was. Do, Pull, pull, yeah, put pull, pull one at the back here, boss, um, and 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 help me out here and try and keep try and save me from from what's from from, from what's an issue here. And I I, I just wondered that scenario. Are you better off just letting the guy go through, letting him score? You've got an hour to score a goal, rather than it's nil nil, but you're down to ten men and your guy misses the Liverpool game on the weekend. And uh, obviously, in, in that moment, he's not thinking Liverpool next weekend. I could miss it. I get it, but. It just made me think, is he better off just letting him go through one-on-one? Just let him go through one-on-one. He's got a lot to do, as you said. Saliba's not slow. I don't think he catches him. But, you know, you'd back him to kind of make it competitive in a, in a foot race going through. But just say to your keeper, David Rea. Oh, Get me out of jail, man. Get yourself some match of the day highlights. Help me out here, bro. Do you know what I mean? I think, do you know what? I agree with you, but I did a stream earlier today with Lee Judges, yeah? And it's it's relevant, but irrelevant, but it made me think. He was like, he was like, oh, if, if, if we had a final on the weekend, like Liverpool was a final and Saliba did that, would Saliba have done it in that moment? Because you know you're out. Lee's now, I'm with you my- in that. You're not thinking about that, but see, it gave Lee's, me people thought, bro. See, Lee's taking my point. That's, what, that's the point I made to him. In The only time you probably pull the guy down is if it's a cup final last minute. The cup final is a lot. You take one for the team, yeah. You take one for the team, you bring him down. Um, but but yeah, to, to what Lee's saying, I, I agree. I don't think you need to in that scenario really, you know, really foul him. Just just let him go through. Just let him and look, we're talking about Ever Ever Nilsson with all due respect. You probably will score. We're not talking Salah. We're not talking yeah, Prime. You're not Andy. talking Harlan and Denman. We're not talking, you know, you know what I mean? We're not talking Ian Wright. So it's not definitely scores. <laughs> it's probable, but it's not like oh Van Nistelrooy. It's just go to the halfway line. Do you know what? I think my stance is harsher than you, you know. I think Saliba, obviously, it's a split-second decision. You know, you've kind of been put into it with Trossard. I think it's one where you just make the foul and then you think about it after and then it's peak. I did yeah. think it's one where it could have been a yellow. I thought it was a red. I thought we caught life. Obviously, you saw VAR. But then I'm a bit I'm a bit harsh. It is a red. It is a red. But, a red but is he last man? I don't... Is it a goal-scoring opportunity? Yes, it is because he's last man, but he's got a lot to do. And I'm harsher on Saliba in that. Like you said, Bro, you're physically great. You, you you can get back defensively. Ben White's kind of there. Just assuming no one else backs the thing. Raya is quick off his line and is quite good. Ivan Nilsson has to race through on goal, let alone score. So I just think Saliba shouldn't have done that, if I'm completely honest with you. It's easy for me to say that, but I don't think he should have done it. If that's if that's if that's Havertz going through, you said it's a yellow. I can't comment on, on, on <laughs> scenarios. Yeah, obviously, no, 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 I'm shameless. Obviously, no, I hear it. Because if that happens against us, 100%, 100%. I didn't even, do you know what it is? Like Wenger said, I didn't. I don't even know why I'm commenting because I didn't even see this in the moment. Bro. I, I, didn't I, 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 I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And you know, it's one of them. No, you're right. If it happened against us, bro, I'm calling for everything. A bit like, I don't think the Jaden Sancho penalty in the Chelsea game was a pen. If that happens to Arsenal, I'm calling everything. But I do think, and I don't know how you feel, I think the red card kind of takes away from the poor performance. Like, obviously, it's difficult with 10 men. I think we was crap even with 11 players out there. I agree. I, I, that's, why, that's why I don't think it does distract from the, from the performance. Because I think we were crap before the red card. Exactly. I don't, red card, I don't think people are using the red card as like a distraction. I think people are aware... Even, we were that first half. We were awful to do this. I, I, I said on the pod I did with Lee uh, yesterday. I was saying that um, I don't remember us being able to keep the ball and pass the ball that badly since the latter Wenger years. There were games. Yeah, when it got real stale when he needed to it actually was go. Horrible, 
Honestly, we've, I've seen us perform poorly or really badly since, but in terms of ball retention, I've never, ever seen Arsenal struggle to pass a ball like that for a good five years. It was That first half was as bad as I remember. It was... And not only is it bad... Like 11 strangers out there, man. Oh, bro, it was so poor. It was I don't know what happened. David Raya, he, even before the red card, he, he, he was messing around. He was looking nervous. squeaky. Yeah, but the whole team just looked like they, were just, they, just, they weren't on it. And I just think it's a shame because in this title race, you've got to be on it every game, deluded. We're chasing a, a, a machine right about now. They have no feelings. They're programmed. It's like buttons. Beep, 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 yep, win. yep. They're and they've been there, done it, all the t-shirt, bare times. Come on, man. So you have to be p- perfect. And the irony is, even if we are perfect, we still might come second. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So Fact. we can't afford to be going into games like Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth are a good team, especially on their patch. So Bournemouth are not some idiot team. Bournemouth yeah, Ariola's is a serious gaffer from the he's, same part he, he, of Spain as Arteta. So maybe you allowed him. But maybe, but even having said that, let's have it right. You've got to be being Bournemouth. We should be moving to them. Yeah, You've let's cut the crap. No, three points. I know, this, I know Saka and Odegaard are out, but you're going for a title, bro. You need to This is why Bournemouth. I love your opinions, man. That's you dead. Know? Yes, we miss Odegaard and we miss Saka, but it get happened. On get, over, get, get on with it. So I have to ask you, I can't, obviously, you know, in Raya's defence, you were stinky, but I do think the way we set up didn't hurt, didn't help you. And you've been good for us. Saliba as well. Everyone has a bad game. It is what it is. The gaffer, though, do you think the manager sets up too negatively? You know, there's been three DMs where, you know, we're, we're praised as one of the best defensive sides. We've dropped off a level. They say defence wins titles, goals win games. We don't look like we can create and score. So is Arteta being a bit too, maybe negative is not the right word, but a bit too defensive centric or a bit too negative and take and got a handbrake up too much and a bit fearful? No, I think on Saturday, yes, but generally no. I, I don't think his general position is to be his, his defence. I think he's recognising the value of been defensively good and I think that he's prioritising that for sure but I don't think he's been too negative I think he realises that if we keep clean sheets we're going to win games because we've got killers up top I think we've got guys who can score up top we've got to keep 11 on the pitch though <laughs> well there's, there's that as well and I think even if you start defensively and you get out of ball with a draw that's not the worst result it's I not the worst but we'll still be vexed we can't be hypocrites we'll be vexed I, I, I'd still be pissed if we drew that game because I think you, you need to be winning those games and the, and the sad thing is and they performed so well, deluded over during what was deemed our difficult periods. So we had Atalanta, Spurs, City, Villa, and Villa. City all and all that. Like a, yeah, over a two week period, we had that we had difficult games. This was meant to be like the easier period, but Southampton, Leicester, Bournemouth it hasn't, it hasn't felt very easy to me. This is meant well, to we be got hard. away with it at the Emirates, let's not lie. We have, bro, we have. So, And a couple of games across the season, you can do that, you can run that, but it's happening too frequently already. Too often, As you said, bro. eight games in. Too often, bro. And, the, I, and the, 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 again, the difficult thing is, we're now going back into what's deemed a difficult period. We've got <laughs> Liverpool, Chelsea, Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, coming up. So, I, I don't know, man. We've got six points out of nine. But you think those three games, you need to be getting six points out. Sorry, nine points out of nine because you might not get nine between the next three. So you need to factor in. That's a really hard game. We might drop points there. We might take a draw there. We might. Whereas now, I think we need to bag seven minimum. Minimum. We need to go on a run. We need to go on a run. Yeah. You need to beat, I'll be real, we need to beat Liverpool. Like I hate to be that guy It's a must win, it's a make or break, but I think you have to win that. I think it was a must-win before Bournemouth. I think the Liverpool game was a must-win game before Bournemouth. I think Liverpool are, are looking like they, they're looking to kind of move to this title race. I'm not sure if they'll have the the longevity in their legs over the course of the season. I have doubts about whether this Liverpool team will be able to kind of maintain this into March and April. Um, but for now, they're very much in the mix and they're looking solid. Without looking great, they look solid. Um, at this point of the season, it's just about kind of looking solid and uh, yeah, Liverpool on the weekend with, with no Saliba, you know, no. no yeah, let's talk about that, man. Like, who sent a half for you then? Because it's looking. I would have Kivio could have well, been a, a, a chance after the Bournemouth win. Kivio, I don't want to see sent a half. I'll be real. Well, this was the beautiful thing about bringing Calafiore because when everyone was saying, "Why are you spending, spending your money on a, another defender?" It's for this. Saliba is the best player in the squad, in my opinion, in terms of a talent, right? But and you want him against Liverpool, of course, you do. He's our, he's our, he's our best player, in my opinion. But I'd be a lot more fearful if we lost Havertz, if he got the red card. <laughs> yeah, because he's going up front. 
Uh, yeah, even Saka. I don't know if he's going to be back for the weekend. I'd be much more concerned playing Liverpool at home without Saka, without Havertz, because the depth of quality in that part of the pitch isn't as strong as it is in defence. Saliba's better than every defender we've got. But I still think Calafiore, Gabriel, um, Ben White, and then you're hoping Timber's back. The <laughs> that, you don't want to see Zinni out there. I'll be real. Big up Zinni, oh, but no, it's, it's scary. No, 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 it's scary. No, no, you're not no, built no, for that. No, no, not big up Zinni. I don't want to see that, Kivio that, either. That, I don't want to agenda him, but you're another one that's not built for this. You would have loved Tini to be fit for a game. Not to start. Not to start. But I think a back four of Calafiore, Ben White, Gabriel and, say, Timba, that back four, I think, is still good enough to contain Liverpool, even without Saliba. So, Saliba's a loss. Of course, he's our best player, as I said. But I think that I don't think it hurts us as much because of the quality that's behind him as it would if it was, say, you know, Rice was out or if it was, say, you know, um, Saka was out. I think Saka not playing on the weekend is, is a bigger issue. Because um, who the hell's right wing? Big up Sir Sterling. I think he was done a bit dirty because I think you've come in and it was it was just a terrible game and you had to get hooked. But Sterling on the right-hand side, for me, I know he's a yard man, I'll support him. I'm not trying mm, to see it anymore. He's too basic mm, on the right side. It's not, it's not happening. And I think Sterling... You'd hope over the course of the season adds value, but I think what we're seeing from Sterling is it's reminding me what Sterling has been in his Liverpool period and definitely his Chelsea period, which is you're going to get six weeks out of Sterling, which are really, really good, and then you get two months where it's really, really bad. And yeah. then you get six weeks, which are really, really good, and then you're like, well, you know, should Sterling an outside shot? Maybe, maybe, maybe he's the guy, maybe it's a master club. Yeah, and, and then you just get, and then he's nothing for two months. And I think we have to just ex- accept. We're going to get some good games from Sterling, but there'll be longer periods where you're like, yo, why are we... Why go out for this, brother? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And Do you think he's been set up to fail, though? Because, like, obviously, it's a double-edged sword because you've not, you're not in the best team prior to this point where he's winning games, but you didn't play for Chelsea. You're kind of building up your fitness and playing catch-up. You're not really yeah, starting like that, so you're not really fit. Like, Do you feel he's... Yeah. I'd be more, more sympathetic if he was either a youngster... Or he was new to the league. He's neither. I hear that. He's neither. Part part of the beauty of bringing in someone like Sterling is that you think you know how this thing works. You know how this thing works, bro. There shouldn't be any need for build up. There shouldn't be any need for you know the prem. Yeah, you know Arteta, and you're a senior player, bro. And you got a point to prove, a chip on your shoulder. The only reason why I thought it was, it was it was a good thing bringing in Sterling, well, two reasons: one, because the flexibility of bringing him cover on the left and the right. But also, he's Vex. Vex. You're bringing a Vex player. So I'm like, that's good. That's good. But right now, I'm not seeing a Vex a player. Point. I'm not seeing a Vex player. So I'm a bit like, I'm not really hearing the whole, does he need time to get up to speed? But, no, bro, you're not 19. You're not 17. You're not eight. You're not a kid. If you were a kid, I might give you a This blind. is your bread and butter. This is, what, this is why you bring in Sterling, because it's plug and play. It's meant to be plug and play. So... No, I'm, I'm not really trying to, trying to hear them excuses for, for, for Sterling, really. He's not been good. But listen, we, we need him on the weekend because Saka's not fit. If Martinelli's not, not match fit to start, he, then he's in. Then he's in, bro. So it's a, it's a must-win game. Liverpool, I think we can beat Liverpool. I think we will yeah. beat Liverpool if, if Saka's fit. Saka plays, I think, win the game. No Saka. You then argue with missing your best three players. Saka, Odegaard. You throw Odegaard in there, No, 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 no. Because this is the oh, one game I was hoping for Odegaard, at least yeah, an hour. No, 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 if he's fit, he'd be on the bench, realistically, but yeah. Uh, I, I think, I don't think he can be anywhere more than 50% fit. And that, if for that me, yeah. And if that, and that for me, isn't a high enough bar to even make the bench. To make the bench, you've got to be 75. You've got to give me 75% fit. And then, you, like you say, either give me an hour or come on for the last 20, if it needs be. But um, other than that, He'll break down again, and then, he, and then he's out for two more months. And um, when, when the injury happened, just on just on um, Odegaard, I said to my to, 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 to my lot, I'd be stunned if he plays again this year. Don't say that, man. Right. Come on, this, man. This, this, this is what I said then. Don't scare said, me, man. The injury looked bad. I said, I said to Lee and Amanda, I said to them, uh, if he plays again this calendar year, I'd be surprised. He's done well. I think he will. I think we'll see him before Christmas. But I'm just making the point that... Well, that's bare football it, before it, Christmas. It, it, oh, no, there, there is, but my point is, is that it looked like a six-monther. It looked like it was going to be a half a season up type. It looked like a bad one. So the fact that... If we get him back, yeah, bro. So if we get him back for November, for me, that's a touch. <laughs> that's a touch. 
I have to ask you then, yeah, because obviously I praise Arteta for what you're doing, the squad, how you've assembled it. But like, you, I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I think people were having little rumblings about could we get adequate cover for Odegaard? Why did we let Smith Rowe and Vieira go? Primarily in the summer, was talking about wingers and strikers and central midfielders. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing injuries, you're seeing suspensions. You know, even if you move Calafuri into centre half, there's a hole like left back potentially, and mm -hmm. we're already being strained. Does this question mark how Edu and Arteta have assembled the squad? Because go back to February, Arteta said we've got one of the smallest squads. Have we necessarily improved that? I think we have improved the squad. Have we improved it enough to win the league? That's debatable. This this squad is better than last year's squad. That for me 100. is indisputable. But is the squad good enough to, to make up the difference? I, I, I can't really go all the way in all the comps, man. Maybe, maybe not. But what I would say about in regards to Pierre, like, people talk about why did you let um, Smith Rowe and Vieira go? Let's have it right. They, they weren't. Smith Rowe did his cut. I don't understand the Fabio Vieira run from a depth point of view. I'm not going to lie. I get it and I, I'm here for it because that just tells me, let's be honest, Arteta they're said, not, I don't rate you. You need to go play football. They're, they're not, they're but not it's a hindsight thing. They're not good huh? enough to lose it. They're not good enough to lose it. Both of them. Bro, you spent 30 million M's on him. Make it happen, bro. Because look now, I, I'm with you. I agree with you. 30, but this is what I think that you bought, Donny. It's 30 mil a lot. For Arteta, it is, bro. You make him mad. And, and can I, I could even be devil's advocate. Did Fabio Vieira not play off the right hand side for Saka? I'm not saying it was good enough, but the depth, purely being devil's advocate, I agree no, with but, Fabio. No, going, no, I think no, Arteta but, said, I don't rate you, you're gone, but it's looking but, shaky. But, you, but no, you ain't got a solution, no, you're not playing Ethan. No, but there's no point in having numbers. You're better off bringing Ethan through and playing him if you think that he can actually do something rather than just keeping Vieira because because he's a number. Do you know what I mean? The, the man, the, none of them two were good enough. Like, so I think they had to go. I agree. Um, but but I think what you I think what your what your point is alluding to is did we spend the money or did we bring in adequate replacements? And the answer is no. But then again, I have to I have to just trust that they tried to get the right people and they couldn't. Hence the last minute loan signing for Ryan Sterling. On paper, Ryan Sterling is a massive upgrade on Vieira and Smith Rowe. That yeah, he is. on paper should work. You can cover Mart you can cover Martinelli, you can cover Sterling. You can play force nine in certain games. He's experienced, he's one thing, he's of a good age, he's in London, he's a London boy, and he's vexed. Everything he just come to get curry goat on Sunday, man. I've well, seen it, man. He probably started getting when he came off at 30 minutes. I literally said on my live streams, warm up the jerk pan, man. That's all we could get from this role. Like, he's got his two plant in and a bit of rice and peas. And he's, he's, he's good, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm okay with that. But on paper, that's that transfer that that loan should have worked, and it, it, it hasn't yet. Um, so I, I don't think the squad is in trouble. We've been unlucky with injuries this year for sure. But let's have it right. Last year we were very lucky with, apart from Timber. Did we have a major injury last year? No, we Part didn't. Eight. But that, that's what I'm asking you about squad depth because it's like, it's like, it's like, you see how it's going to rain right now. It's like we're, we're going outside to do our duties on our on whatever. And it's like, we know it's going to rain. We're not bringing an umbrella. We're not bringing a jacket. We're just hoping, we're out there in, in sandals and that. We're hoping it don't rain. And if it where don't rain, you go with it. So where, where would you say we're thin? Where would you say we're light? I think personally, up front. You know, Kai Havertz is doing his thing. He's made that, that. He's made that his own. Jesus is poor. I do think, you know, I can't really say we're poor in the flanks because there are versatile players. You can make a case of Jesus, Sterling, Ethan. But I think mm -hmm. we're light there. If I'm honest, I think we're light at centre-half. I know there's a couple of versatile players. But, I think we're light. But we're that's light the, at centre-half. That's the strongest My brother, <laughs> Kivio, do you believe it? Do you believe in Kivio with your heart? Tommy's hang not on, fit. If, hang on, hang on, hang on. If Kivio's your fourth centre-back, you're doing well. But who's that third one? Who's that one that might not necessarily take Saliba Calif or Gabriel's spot, he, but they're certain? Kind of fury. He ain't played a centre half like that okay, apart from Bolton. No, I agree no, with you. There's no, versatile you're players. But you're talking about options. I'm saying. Yeah, but you put Calafuri centre half. Options. What's going on at left back then? If Timber's not there. Uh, so have back, we got that much depth, guys? Left back. Well, hang on a minute. How many? How many people? Because you got, got Timber, Tommy, White, and someone else who Calafuri can play centre half, but you move one of them about the fullbacks. But hang on, hang on, hang on. You've got you've got three players that can play left back: Calafiore, Zinchenko, and Timber. Oh, and, even Tomiassi, really and, and even what? Well, and even Tomiassi, right? <laughs> and even Tomiassi, right? If all four of those guys are out, that's unlucky. So even if you have to move Calafiore to centre back for whatever reason, you're not you're, you're thinking I've still got three others that in theory could play. Then the fact that all three of those guys are at the moment injured: Timber, Tommy, and Zinni. 
That's that's bad luck. But bro, that's the Arsenal it. packs. We've been seeing this historically. Maybe not so much the last two years, but we've been seeing could, this. And you could say, is it bad luck? Because you know Tomiyasu's record, you know Timber's record, and you know Zidane's no, record. So, so maybe maybe you've, you've left yourself light knowing what could happen. But I, I, I think personally, the only area where really light is up top. I, I still don't fully... I think Havertz is a very intelligent football player. that's disrespected a lot. But I still don't know if he's the guy that over a season is going to be the guy that 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 scores those key goals in key moments. I'm back him um, to get 13, 14 league goals. Past that, it's, it's all great. And, and it's not even so much the number for me. It's the, can you get the winner at Anfield? Can you get the winner at the Etihad? Can you get the equaliser in the last minute at home to United? It's it's it's, it's and you get us all... out of jail against Bournemouth for no reason. Exactly, and 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 this we, we did the pod um, with, with Lee and Turkish and James the other day. And Make Turkish sure you check out. Point. Yes, man, AFTV Forever Arsenal. But Turkish made the point that for our highest paid player, he still waited for Havertz to really be the, the standout guy in a game where everyone else is poor. And I get the point he's making. And you could argue Southampton, he kind of stepped up a little bit in that game. No, nah, that's one of my favourite goals from him. He did. He did. You and Spurs I mean? last year, if I'm honest. Exactly. But the point I think he was making was that your highest paid player, when everyone else is poor, you kind of look to him to be the guy that says, you know, we've been dog today, but I'm going to do a ting. Van Persie did it bare times for Arsenal. We were awful, but bang. One chance, we nick it, we nick it 1-0. I don't know if Havertz has got that in his locker. And more than the quantity of goals that he may or may not score, I'm more concerned about the kind of goals in the kinds of games where we need something from someone and he just pops up and boom. I don't know. And, and then behind him, Jesus is dead food. I would have sold Jesus in the summer. I said that all yeah. years. It, it kills me that I agree with you because you know I love Jesus, but it's peak, done. bro. He's done. So I think up top we're light. I think everywhere else, I think we're good. Centre mid surely were light as well, man. Surely. I know beneath the surface, especially at, well, let me not say light. I think we're lacking at eight. We got rice and all these guys, but we're agree. missing that Santi that says Ag- that connector. Agree. Ag- agree. I think it, I think we, we, we don't have a great eight. I we're not necessarily light, but yeah, I think we're lacking I, I, especially. I, I agree, but I think a midfield of Odegaard, Rice, and Marino, I think that is a midfield that can win the Premier League. I I, I think you can upgrade on that, but if that's your three with the back four we've got. That for me is good enough. Um, I, I wanted Bruno, excuse me, Gimarish as, as our main I target. I think we all did. I, I, that was my main target all summer. I mean, before even a striker, I love that guy. He's this, he's had a slow start to the season this year, marking me off a little bit. But I think he's a I think he's a brilliant player. He's got he's that nastiness close, about him as well. Man. He's got that little. He's the close thing to Shaka that we had. A little bit of nastiness in him, but he's got a great, I think he's left foot, a great left foot. He can score a banger. He's combative. He's got a lovely pass. He can get up and down really, really well. But anyway, that, that, that's kind of come and gone. But I, I think apart from up top, that's the only position I'm a bit like, ah, uh, I think we're, 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 we're going to win this league, which is what I think Arteta's are thinking is, we're going to win it defensively, not offensively. We're going we're gonna to win it by keeping... So Joe's eating. But right now, we're not even doing that. So that's concerning. I think you made a great point with Kai Havertz, and it's, it's it's with me. It's gone beyond the point of like asking more of Havertz. I mean, everyone can do more; you can do whatever. But you mm. show me what you're like. I'm not saying you can't improve, but you've shown me you're kind of overperforming. You felt I didn't think you'd be this vital to the side. I just don't mm. think you've got it in you to a degree to be that difference maker that you and I have been speaking of. So it's got past the point. I think Havertz is doing all he can. I look at how the squads assemble because I don't want to say it's naive. There's too much money. These are too smart for anything to be naivety. But it's more for me. It's more hope that Kai Havertz could do that rather than a death. Like, I know you can't find an Erling Haaland, but you, and again, his form has been crap, but you know he's going to bail you out, kind of what you're saying. I do think we miss players with Stardust. I do think every team will struggle, but you take Odegaard out, you take Saka out, we're in issues, and I don't think there's a necessary plan B. So it leads me to ask you then, yeah, my last question for you. Genuinely, how do you feel about the title? How did you feel about the title race before this Bournemouth thing? How do you feel now? Like, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Good question, because I'm not the sort of person, so I'm not really reactionary. I tend to stick with my views with what I predicted until I see something drastic that makes me change my mind. I had us winning the title, um, not because I think we've got the goals to win the title, but I thought and hoped we had the defence to win it that would get us over the line. Um, I'm not going to change my view on that because of Bournemouth. because I think it's one game where we were dog, but I, I think we need to get back on, back on the horse this weekend against Liverpool. If we win that game... I think it's a must win. So I think we need to put Liverpool back in their box a little bit. Liverpool comes to the Emirates. Statement as well. It's a six-pointer, man. 
I think it is. Liverpool comes to the Emirates on Saturday and win. We lose, it gets scary. I'm not gonna lie. You kind of, it's kind of peak, and I've said all along, deluded that it's not about doing really, really well pre Christmas. It's about getting to Christmas and just being part of the pack. I look You're at it in like, and around, yeah, exactly. Yes, man, it's like the Grand National. You haven't got to be leading after the first two, three fences, but you halfway through, you got to be, you got to be in that mix. And then the second half, you put, you try and, you know, pull away. Yeah, try and make some space. Yeah, so as long as you're four or five points in and around City come Christmas, that's not that's not a disaster for me. You start going six, seven, eight points behind City, you're then asking City to then to lose three games. And it's, it's and almost May. improbable at this moment. That, that's not happening. Do you know what I mean? So for me, stay in touch. I'm going to still stick with us winning the, winning the league, but I think the boys have got to fix up allow these stupid red cards. Let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Let's get back to what we were doing last year defensively. Let's get our players back um, and ride it out. It's, right now, it's sticky. But if you want to win titles, decisions, decisions go against you. Deal with it. You want to win titles, stand up now. injuries happen. Deal with it. You want to win titles, you know, a team score three goals that you don't deal with it. Yeah? One nil down, cool. This game ain't done. I was, I was looking just before I go at the game part of the game on the weekend um, uh, us and Bournemouth and even though we were 2-0 down deluded and down to 10 men I was still looking at that last 10 minutes thinking I want to see if they're still going if they're still going for it even though we all kind of know we've accepted what's going on that game, game's done right I was looking for them to see to show me that for them the game wasn't done because even at 2-0 down with 5 minutes to go are you still trying to get a, are you, is that belief that well, if we get one, it might do a one, thing. It might do a thing, rather than all right, write off onto the next game. No, 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 no. As, as, as a champion mindset, you don't write off points. I, I watch tennis. Tennis is my favorite sport. I watch tennis. The man them don't they don't give up points, <laughs> even when they know they're two sets down. You keep going points, bro. You keep going because you keep believing. If I can just get a rhythm, if I can get one, if I can win two sets, I'm back in it. Right. So. For me, it's about my my thing now is about the reaction. Teams will lose games. Teams will play poorly. Cool. Park it. Go and smoke Shakhtar. Yeah, and warm up for the game. Bit of feel good. Yeah, man. And go to that game on Sunday with your mind right and thinking to yourself, "There's no Saliba here. There's no Odegaard here. Maybe even no Saka here." But you know what? Bun that. Man City won titles about De Bruyne and, and Haaland. Man City have got their best player out for the season. I don't want to hear no crying. Get on with it. Facts. Get that's that's it. that's the best point because at the end of the day, yeah, it could be better, it could be worse. I personally feel we just have to deal with these injuries, and it's like you said, winners don't make excuses. There's going to be curveballs. We're never just the sun's never just going to shine. We play every game. Everything's fair with the refs. We never get sent oh, off, and we just win games. My last question for you, just because you you provo- you put a spark in my mind, yeah, pause. How do you look at Arteta then? Like, if we don't go and win that league, because it's another third year of flirting with it. I hear this chat coming up over the last couple of days, deluded, and uh, you know, with all due, I just think. I think people that are posing this, oh, if this, if, this, if this isn't the year, he's got to go. People that are posing that chat are people that never really rated him anyway. And that's okay. If you don't rate him, just say, I don't really rate him. There's what always waiting me, with the pitchforks. Yeah, but what annoys me is, after City, genius. Genius, Marteta. That's my manager. That's my guy. Tactical this, that. And then Bournemouth, oh, no, he's on, on the tightrope. He's got to win it. Because if we lose to if we lose to Liverpool on Saturday, try no, there's going to be a whole lot, whole lot of idiots on. And I'm not naming any names. We know who they are. Whole heap of idiots on YouTube and on online on on Sunday and Sky night, Sports as well. Chatting, chatting rubbish, yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Them kind of people that are on this hole, he's got to win something or he's got to go. Generally, are people that have been looking for an excuse to just pile in. My view is very very simple. I think let's evaluate it in May because it, what if he comes third, wins the Champions League? You catch life, boy. It's a big ask, but you call it. You call it life. You won the Champions League. You probably build, build the banner statue. But that's but why terms, context is key. But in terms, in terms of the fans that are saying it's the league, I've got in the league. I'm like, just shut up and just wait and just judge him at the end of the season. What I will say though is, for a club like Arsenal, five years no trophy is unacceptable. So the money's been spent, and we gas up our tech. So and questions money's been have to be spent. Yeah, and Arthur is my guy. But let's have it right. If the, if we win nothing this season, and we're out of all the cups relatively early. And we take the title race and we fall out of it in back end of March. So the last kind of like eight games, seven games, six games, we're never really in it. There's a, there's a chat to be had about with this guy, a bit like Southgate. I'm, I'm a Southgate guy. That's, that's my guy. But it gets to a point where you're like, you've had four tournaments, bro. 
had four tournaments. And although this I might not be for you, man. Maybe this isn't for you. Maybe we just got to just be, be brutal. I'm just like, you know what? Thank you very much. But we've got to try something else. But right here and right now, I'm in this, I'm in this for the long haul because the trajectory is going in the right direction. You're right. No, there's been upgrades. There's been, I do think as Arsenal fans, we shouldn't be patient because I think money's been spent. For me, because I talk up Arteta, I think you need to deliver. And I do think the best thing and the worst thing about Arsenal is before I talk about City, we've shot ourselves in the foot in the last title races. Like everything could have been addressed internally. Where I agree with you is that, you know, I, I think football's too white and black. You know, you can't mm. say Arsenal are nowhere near City. City are invincible and this, that and the other and then get at a man when we don't win. It's almost mm. an impossible job in that, yes, you know, we have only lost two games in 2024. This is our first loss of the season. But I just feel, uh, as you said earlier, you know, when you've gone through the Villa, the Spurs, the Cities, and you, it's been courageous. And although we beat Southampton and Leicester and lost to Bournemouth, I do think the sentiment changes. I do think context is key. I don't think Arteta gets sacked because he signed a new deal and he's keeping up the trajectory and we're competitive. But and I just think questions have to be asked, man. Unless he unless he finishes fifth this season, which we reviewed. Should, yeah, his 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 job shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be like unless it's like some kind of crazy collapse, crazy collapse. Other and and, you, and all teams like Villa are finishing above you, or you know Newcastle or Spurs. And, unless that happens. Uh, for me, he's there next season. But th that doesn't mean that if he's fired for coming third and no trophies, I'm going to be outraged either because, bro, uh, you, you, you spent peas. You've had, you've had time. And if it gets to a point where... We're, we're, we're at a fine point now, Deluded, where it feels like it's either winning the league is the next level or you, you're knocking, you're, you do a Spurs. You're there's a bit of like regression. Knock in, I agree. There's no one in and then you just, you're not going backwards. Like, you, you leave the house. <laughs> you're not letting, no one's letting you in the, in, in the house anymore. Fact. Like, if you go through the door or you're walking away from it. I think we're at that point now. So, let's see how it ends. But yeah, if, if we don't win on Sunday, try no. All the usual idiots will be online, shouting, screaming, spitting at the mouth. Ah, oh, Teta out. He's got to go. He's a fraud. All that idiot. All the idiots. I ain't got no time for that stuff. Miss me with that. And my only thing with Arteta that I will say in that, as much as I like him and I like what you're doing, I love my football club. The worst thing I would say with Mikel Arteta is, in the most respectful way, you're in the baby stage of your managerial career. I don't want you to learn for no reason at Arsenal. What went well, what went bad. You go somewhere else and you say, oh, bro, that didn't work at Arsenal. Let me do the opposite. Obviously, you go and win stuff. And another thing I don't want to happen is, I don't think it's an immediate threat. But I think Chelsea can get their act together very quickly. I don't know what City's going to look like, but they're going to be there. I, I think they're a long way around, away from it. But God forbid Man United get their shit together. And everybody, Liverpool get better. And everybody's kind of fighting because right now it's City. I think it's us in terms of stability in the project. I want us to take advantage of this. I don't know what the next three, four years is going to say, but I do feel this has been a time to bag a Prem or a Champs. And we may not have this again. And I don't want to read too much into it because these players are part of it and they're still young. But how much times are the likes of Saliba? It's a bit different, but Saka, all of these guys, you're going to be the bridesmaid, not the bridegroom, not the groom, and think, oof, I've, tried, I've gone as far as I can here. Well, well, Maybe I need to go is, elsewhere. Well, well, Real Madrid are circling for Saliba, they, Saliba. We know this. They, they, they are. And, and how long before the Sakas and Saliba start thinking? Boy. They're man of 23 now. Like, yeah. this is where you arrive, as Wenger said, your ball right. is now. That's, that's right. So, you know, you don't want to lose, lose the best players. But yeah, I think let's just focus on Liverpool. Let's kind of let's try and get our players back, and let's let's, let's handle business on, on the week. And I think we will win. Um, no Saka makes it really hard. Liverpool are a serious team, but I think as long as we can um, step it up, defensively solid, let's get back to basics, get back to common sense playing, let's get back to working well, let's get back to keeping the ball, moving the ball well, being patient, um, and look for that cutting edge up top. It's harder when you don't have that kind of that, that piercer. The only person we've got in the team that can make that pass is probably Jorginho. Um, beyond, beyond then, the Odegaard. Yeah, it's a trade-off. You know what you happens wanna, when you he's in the team. Exactly. Do you want to start with Jorginho against Liverpool? It worked it last year, but I, I, just, I did, think their midfield is too certain this year for that, man. I Big up Jorginho. I'd have, you'd have all the faith, but I think you've got to go with the thugs, man. I genuinely think you've got to put Trossard in the 10 and you've got to try something. I, I, I wouldn't be... I'm not, do you know what the saddest thing is? The midfield he went with Bournemouth, a part of me would want to see that against Liverpool, you know, just for the industry. But... I do think you need a bit of guile. Do you put Trossard okay. in? Do you put Sterling on the left? But it's like what you said. Sterling's not going on the left if Martinelli's fit. And then you've got the Saka debate, which I think is the biggest thing. Like, we can't mm. not have Saka. He's capable of just doing some questionable stuff. I think everyone else has evident limitations. And I do think the way Arteta set us up, it felt like against Bournemouth square pegs in round holes, man. But as you said, hopefully we beat Liverpool. If we win, the narrative changes a bit, man. Let's get, let's, let's, let me get a prediction from you before you get out of here, man. I'm going 2-1 Arsenal. <laughs>
<laughs> Liverpool don't have an abundance of goals in them, but Salad, oh, careful, man. Good and Salad's a problem. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I think we'll concede because for some reason our home record in terms of concession is really weirdly poor. Um, I, I'm gonna make the prediction on the premise that Saka starts. So Saka <laughs> starts right. I'm Hella asterisks. Yeah, bare caveats in there. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm going to go two one as well. You know, I don't think we're going to get a bag of goals. I think, um, I think it'll be. I think we're going to smoke Shakhtar. I think that will be a four five, um, but I don't think this will be that. I'm going to go. I'll go two one as well. So we both got two one. By God's yeah. grace, we're right. We'll have to see, man. George, if I let you get out of it, let people know they can find you, man. Come on, man. I'm out here. Man. I'm outside, bro. I'm outside. Catch me. I'm on Instagram. It's my name, Jordan Jarrett Bryan. Um, you can catch me on AFTV, Forever Arsenal with the boys. Do a podcast twice a week. Um, and i got a podcast as well, Whisper It Loudly, which I do with Darren Lewis. He was Make sure you follow them on Troy TikTok. Tarzan. There's some good mouthpieces there, man. Yes, man. Follow them on TikTok, Whisper It Loudly. Um, yeah, all, all my stuff's out there, man. Check me out. Like the man said, people, check the guy out. Again, if you're too lazy to actually listen to what the man said, check out the description, copy and paste, follow and support the movement. Hopefully the next time we speak, it's a lot more positive. As usual, man, you know, I always appreciate your time and your rationale, anytime, man. So anytime. let me let you get out of here, Boski. Come on, man. So yeah, people, hit the like button, subscribe and all that good stuff. Peace.